Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to see the uh, starting night anyway. Hello, I'll do it with us. Um, this afternoon, we're going to give you a little program of uh, some of the music played by Ted Lewis and his band. Uh, that's why I've got the jacket and the hat in my cane. Um, it's to disguise my lack of any other talent. Ted Lewis, uh, often dismissed as a, a corny sort of vaudeville figure, which, of course, he, he, he was. That's where he started out in vaudeville on the stage, but over his uh, 50 odd years of band leading, he employed many famous jazz players and played a high proportion of hot jazz alongside the sentimental Schmaltz, for which he was actually more famous. But uh, we're going to concentrate on the jazz side today, but we're going to give a nod or two to the sentimental bits as well. Uh, first, I want to introduce the fine body of men who are going to help me pay tribute to Ted today. At the piano, Mr. Keith Nichols. Phil Rutherford. <laughs> and the drums, Nick Ward. <laughs> and banjo and guitar, Mr. Keith Stephen. <laughs> Paul Mannery on trombone. <laughs> and the gentleman who's going to be the real star and carry this show. Because, uh, as you know, Ted Lewis was a clarinet player as well as singer, dancer, band leader, blah, 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 blah. And uh, Ted's ability on his instrument was world famous, absolutely legendary. Eddie Condon said of him, Ted Lewis can really make the clarinet talk. It says, for Christ's sake, put me back in the case. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, field, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. So a few introductory words anyway. At the age of 15, Ted, who was born in Circleville, Ohio in 1892, his real name was known as Theodore Leopold Friedman, but he shortened it to Ted Lewis because he said it fit on a theater marquee rather better. <laughs> um, at the age of 15, he was playing clarinet and traveling medicine shows and carnivals and appearing on stage in vaudeville and burlesque houses. And at 16, he was leading his own band, home in Ohio. Aged 18, he took off for New York, only to be dragged back by his father. He found him playing in a place called the El Dorado Cabaret. But they couldn't keep Ted down on the farm, ladies and gentlemen. By 1915, at the age of 23, he was back in New York. His eccentric clarinet playing, dancing, and rye singing style, it says here, made him very popular. And he was featured as a solo act in shows like the Greenwich Village Follies and Zeekfield's Midnight Frolics. Um, he became the first act, in fact, to ever headline three Broadway shows simultaneously and used to run from one theater to do his act, run to the next and do his act again. Three salaries as well. Then in 1917, the original Dixieland Jazz Band came to town and Ted was immediately smitten with a new sound of jazz. He joined Earl Fuller's famous jazz band at Rector's Supper Club in Manhattan, then took advantage of uh, the fame this brought to launch his own band in 1918, incidentally taking most of the poor old Earl Fuller's jazz band with him. He even opened his own, well, ask Chris Barber about that. He uh, even opened his own cabaret, <laughs> 1953. He even opened his own cabaret called the Bal Tabarin, so the band had a home base. All went well, and in 1919, the band was asked to record for Columbia Records. The first section was rejected, but on October the 1st, 1919, Ted and the boys recorded the first of over 200 sides for Columbia in an amazing 14-year exclusive relationship with his label. Here's one of the tunes or that they committed to wax that day. It's called Blues, My Naughty Sweetie Gives to Me. And on this, Norman Field will reproduce the strange klezmer <coughs> clarinet style mixed up with jazz, which uh, Ted brought to the character music. Thank you. 
1920, Ted and the boys are back in the Columbia studios, and one of the tunes he recorded then was become very much associated with him, and his strange laconic singing style, uh, which is said to have influenced the delivery of the great W.C. Fields. So uh, we shall see. Although Ted was fairly abstemious, and W.C. was less so. Anyway, see if you can detect the similarity as I attempt to do the Ted Lewis vocal on this one. It's called When My Baby Smiles at Me. <laughs>
Wayne Blues. This next tune is called uh, Running Wild. And speaking of wild, here is a really wild connection. Because uh, Marilyn Monroe famously sang this one in the uh, movie Some Like It Hot. And in a showbiz autobiography by Ted Lewis's nephew, uh, whose name I forget, but uh, he claimed in that that it was Ted Lewis out in California who introduced Marilyn to hard drugs. I take that on its, uh, on its merits, but anyway, there is an odd connection. Here's the tune anyway, it's called Running Wild.
do, do, do. Beat Street, mama. You better not mess with me. So there's plenty of fancy pay. Or take and get down in Tennessee. Well, you know, I'll advertise for you in the Memphis press. Twenty-two hot mamas answer yes. So, Beat Street, mama.
praise for all things oriental, alongside the one for all things to do with the South Sea Islands. Just exoticism, I guess. But anyway, it's a tune called San.
to play our tune for you called I Wish I Was in Peoria. Yes, there are, there are nine choruses and verses all different to this. Uh, with, most of them are dreadful. Uh, stuff like, you know, um, the beauty queens back in Peoria fought in the Civil War area. It's, <laughs> yeah, the knives and forks in Peoria are chained down to the floor here. It's a bad... <laughs> so, when Clancy Hayes revived this tune, and then everybody else did as well, he picked the best of the uh, chorus and uh, verse and chorus combinations. And that's why the gentleman will be donning the nautical head gear. Ted, of course, was the captain.
comprehensive set of <coughs> instructions here. And I now learn from turning over the sheet that I'm going to do a vocal on bugle call rag, which is uh, <laughs> it's my slight sort of puzzle. It should, in fact, be. Uh, oh, right, that's the next one down. Right. <laughs> I, I'm afraid I don't know the words now. Oh, it's <laughs> Does certainly help if you want to sing the song. You never stopped him before. <laughs> of course, to sing this tune, Norman has to wear the hat. But, but, I mean, this is almost more honour than I can reasonably bear to actually have the Imperial Topper transferred onto one so unworthy. However, we will attempt to make up for this by um, putting on my best glasses and reading the, um, uh, singing the words.
another lady who uh, came from the vaudeville tradition. It was a great, uh, great singing lady entitled, uh, named Sophie Tucker, and uh, she recorded several times with Ted Lewis and his band. Uh, one of them was this great tune by Shotton Brooks, as I recall, Some of These Days. And as you see from the hat transference routine, Mr. Nichols will favour us with a vocal on this, as Miss Tucker is unsadly indisposed this <laughs> afternoon. Street. It was actually Beale Avenue in Memphis, but who knows? 
Well, I presume people in Memphis know, but there we are. None of them here. Any Memphians here this afternoon? No? Alright. Anyway, here uh, is the Beale Street Blues, the Ted Lewis arrangement, I hope.
afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to introduce myself to you. I'm Dr. Lewis, WFD. You want to know what WFD stands for? World's famous dispenser. Dispenser of what, I hear you ask? Sodas? No, no, no. I'm a dispenser of the greatest thing in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Sunshine and happiness. Now, five years ago, I guess it was six. What was it, seven, boys? Eight! Nine years ago, I invented this wonderful discovery. And it's that discovery that I want to share with you today, folks. Now, once you swallow this marvelous remedy of mine, it's known to cheer up, brace up, perk up, and pep up. And a whole bottle is known to turn the crabbiest mother-in-law into a laughing hyena. And to show you folks that I'm on the level, I'm going to share with you all the recipe for my world-famous discovery of homemade sunshine. Here's how it goes. Now, to a day that's long, you know, you just add a little sun. Yes, sir. And what do you get, folks? I'll tell you what you get. Homemade sunshine. To a weary trial, I'll say, you just had a little smile, uh -huh. and that's how I make it. my famous homemade sunshine. Well, you know, you mix a little hope and laughter with just a dash of philosophy, and just add. Add a little spice of make-believe to this, this famous recipe. Now folks, that's all the bill of fare that we all must share to get this marvelous discovery of Dr. Lewis's homemade sunshine. Now, to the moon above, or you just add a little, add a little love. So, now that'll give you a big dose of my homemade sunshine. And to a lovely night in June, well, you just add a touch of that wedding too. Now that'll give you more of Dr. Lewis's homemade sunshine. at your door, folks, and you're feeling those, those weary blues, don't worry about it, folks. Why don't you just turn that old wolf into a stalk and then spread the happy news. And when your neighbors call, you just, just introduce them, introduce them all to that sweet little bundle of Homemade sunshine. Is everybody happy? Yes, sir. <laughs> In those days, of course, the cheese-loving surrender monkeys they had become. Uh, that's not an American flag. Uh, anyway, those independent folks up in Quebec, they, they decided they would keep drinking that good wine and so on. So, for a lot of Americans who were within easy reach by train, you just hopped on the train and went up the East Coast there to uh, Montreal in particular, because uh, that was a place that happened to be over time. And a tune written about it called Hello Montreal, and with a bit of luck, we're going to play it for you now. There's a lot of hokum around this on the thing. The band have to start by singing that he's a jolly good fellow. So, gentlemen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? Let's do it properly, come on. But he's a jolly good fellow, but he's a jolly good fellow. Hey, break it up there, break it up, fellas. The train from Montreal is leaving from track number 42. All aboard.
the speakeasy, said Johnny Brown. I'm going to leave this town, but everything is closing down. Speakeasy, speakeasy, I'll tell the bunch. I won't go east, I won't go west, I got a different hunch. Then I'm leaving in the summer, and I won't be back till fall.
old by the time this was recorded in uh, 1928. He had uh, Don Murray, a very fine Greek man, who came to a, a sad and undefined end. He was found lying by the side of the road with massive head injuries in California. No one was certain whether he'd been hit by a car or dumped there by the gangsters because he had been having an affair with a lady who was connected with a gentleman who was connected. No, I don't think he was, I don't think that was the case. Well, because he had $200 in his pocket. Oh, I, I can't see the gangsters leaving the, the body they beat up without going through the final $200. Which is actually, which is actually quite a reasonable amount of money today. Never mind in 1928. <laughs> Caesar story. We're going to uh, 
Here we are, yes. Peter Norman on this one is the same of the vocal. The Ted Lewis recording was very nice, but there's also a lovely recording of it. There's also a lovely recording of it by uh, Jimmy Noon and his orchestra, so I thought we'll combine the two. We'll do the verse a la Jimmy Noon and the rest of the tune a la Ted Lewis.
Dorsey uh, played in the Lewis Band for a couple of years before he set off to join the uh, brother, co, co lead the Tommy Dorsey, the Dorsey Brothers Band with his brother Tommy. Uh, one of the tunes he was featured on was this 1928 version of Clarinet Marmalade.
things, those hurtful things you've done to my poor heart. I'll say, then, then you're going to regret all those, those words you've spoken.
exaggeration It's not exaggeration Let me tell you about it folks If you want to see the moon And know that it's splendid If you want to see the wind The stars can shine If you want to feel a breeze
something I forgot to mention, if you've enjoyed listening to this band, essentially this band, um, if not entirely this band, is going to be appearing at Ambleside uh, in March next year. Um, I think I told them. <laughs> anyway, uh, under, the, under the guise of Mike Durham's classic jazz band, so if you've enjoyed this, uh, come along and catch us in a more unbuttoned mood at the sanitation at Ambleside in March. There's an ad for it in the festival programme if you're looking for a phone number to ring on your mobile, the minute you leave the theatre, to book your place. <laughs> Oh, man, depression, you are through your thumbs on. 